to support the body, to protect things, and then also it's going to allow movement. If you didn't have any bones and you were just a bag of muscles, right? You can't move. Muscles can't move unless they have something to attach to. And then also the, the bones act as a storage for minerals. And there's calcium in your bones, but calcium is also used as a electrolyte or a neurotransmitter in your body. So if the body needs calcium for other functions, it's going to pull it out of the bones. And then also it's going to be put back in. So calcium is constantly taken in and out of the bones. And then also there's blood cell formation that occurs in the bone marrow. And most of that's going to be in the red bone marrow. I will get more into the details of that later. So you have the typical structure of a long bone. Okay, you have long bones like, say, your femur, your humerus, things like that. And then you have flat bones, would be like the bones of your skull, your sternum, and things like that. The flat bones are the ones where you can have more of the <clears throat> bone cell production or blood cell production. So has anybody heard of like growth plates in your bones? Okay, so that's the epiphyseal plate. So when your when your bones are still growing, that's where the bone growth occurs. And once I get the picture up here. Okay, So on the long bone, you can have like the shaft of the long bone, then you have the epiphyseal plate towards the end, then you have the uh, epiphysis. So not everyone's as bad as they think they are, right? <laughs> so like I mentioned here is the structure of the functions of the bones. Obviously, not everyone's going to be able to do that, right? And mineral storage, blood cell formation. So here's showing the spongy bone. That's where you can have the blood cell formation in the bone marrow where the blood cells are formed. So here in the long bone, you have the basic the shaft here, which is the diaphysis, and then you have the epiphysis here. The diaphysis is going to have a core where you have the yellow bone marrow. And then the epiphysis is going to be more spongy bone. And then you have that epiphyseal plate, which is also called the epiphysis. <laughs> so it's basically a tubular shaft. That the diaphysis is the center portion of the long bones. And it's a tubular shaft that forms the long axis of the bones. And it consists of compact bone. So this part here is going to be compact bone which has a different structure, and we'll go over the structure of that, versus spongy bone. Spongy bone is where you're going to have the trabecula. And like I say, the yellow bone marrow is going to be found in the medullary cavity right there, as opposed to red bone marrow, which is found in other places, and we'll talk about that later. And then you talk about the epiphysis, which is, which is the expanded end of the long bones. And then usually it's going to be lined with articular cartilage. So that's the part that forms the joints. And then, like I said before here, you have spongy bone, which forms the interior part of the uh, lung of the epiphysis. And then this epiphyseal line, which is also called the metaphysis, that's where bone growth occurs. And when we talk more about bone growth, we'll be getting into the details of that. But basically, this is where you grow from these, this part of the bone. It doesn't grow from the middle, it grows at the, at the end. And that's why it can be significant, clinically significant. Like if adolescents, if they break a bone, sometimes it can affect the epiphyseal plate. So then here's going to be the spongy bone which is in the epiphysis. 
as opposed to the compact bone. You can see this is much more dense as opposed to this part here. And then here's a little more detail on the spongy bone. Here's the compact bone. And then they have the lamella, which is, we'll talk about that later. It has a certain structure with all kinds of different features to it. And then there's blood, blood vessels that work their way through the compact bone and also into the uh, spongy bone. So again, here's just a little more detail on the epiphyseal plate. Anybody know what bone this is here? Tibia, yeah, tibia, fibula. So this is at the knee. Okay. So there's the growth plate there, and then you can see the spongy bone here, and then the compact bone there with the medullary cavity, or the bone marrow cavity. And then here it just shows other areas where there's the growth plates. In this case, there's just one growth plate at the end. And this one here, which I think is probably the femur, there's two different areas where you have the growth plates. Is that the internal? Uh, no. Not all of them are, but there's some stuff that's very similar to that. Okay. So then this is the long portion of the bone here, and then we'll be talking about the different membranes. You have the periosteum, and then the endosteum here. Endo as meaning into the inside. So the endosteum lies the inside of the bone marrow, I mean the inside of the compact bone and the bone marrow cavity, and the periosteum goes around the outside, peri meaning around. So the periosteum is a double layer membrane, it has, has an outer fibrous layer, which is dense regular connective tissue, and then you have the inner osteogenic. So when you say the word osteogenic, what does, what does that mean? <coughs> Genesis, so it's bone growing. So that's where you're going to have the cells that grow the bone. And it's going to have a lot of blood supply going to the periosteum and a lot of nerves. Which part of the bone is affected by osteoporosis? Pretty much the whole thing. Yeah. Um, as far as where the weakest part of the bones, we'll talk about that a little bit later, has to do with where the trabeculae are. Like when we talk about compression fractures, there's certain areas where compression fractures are going to occur, and we'll talk about that later. And so the periosteum has a lot of nerve supply, so a lot of times if you break a bone or something, it's the periosteum that's generating the pain. And then there's things called Sharpie's fibers, that are going to anchor the membrane to the bone. Sharpie's fibers are going to anchor a lot of different things to the bone, like the meniscus of the knee around the outside edge, uh, anchors the discs to the vertebra. And then you have the endosteum, which is a membrane that covers the internal surface of the bone. And then, like I mentioned before, you have Bone is a dynamic tissue, it's getting reabsorbed and laid, and laid back down on a constant basis. Okay? When, you, when you break a bone and it heals, it's pretty much going to heal with normal bone tissue after a certain period of time. As opposed to ligaments and tendons and things like that, they're not going to heal the same. So if I had a choice, I'd rather break a bone than to sprain a ligament or pull a tendon because bone pretty much heals bone. In some cases, if it's, if it's displaced, you might end up with a little bit of a displaced bone, but over time, that can actually get moved back. The, the, the part on the outside will get reabsorbed and more laid down on the other side. And the two different cells that do that is osteoblasts 